Do you have a question for me? Well, now is the chance. Maybe you've been following my channel and just you just have this burning question about your cello journey that you would just like my specific feedback on. We just hit 20,000 subscribers and I'm so excited. So as a huge thank you to all of you who are subscribed, I want to do a two to three part series where I answer as many of your questions as possible. So if you do have a question for me, first, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And then second, just go ahead and write your question in the comment section below. And I will hit as many of them as I possibly can. So this is kind of an impromptu video. I wanted to wait, obviously, until I hit 20,000 subscribers. And in a way, the timing couldn't be more fun. I'm actually on vacation with my wife and our kid, and we're visiting her side of the family in South Korea. So we're in this fun little city. Uh, it's not tiny, but it's a smaller city called Suwon. It's about a 45 minute drive from the capital, Seoul. And what I want to do with the rest of this video basically is sh share the city with you and share a couple life updates. To be completely honest, we haven't seen as much of the city as we normally would like to. Uh, when you travel with a seven month old, you're kind of sneaking out between naps, kind of tourist ninjas. So what we'll do is we're, I'm going to take you on the walk that we've been doing basically every day between naps. So stay tuned. Uh, I'm going to be sharing something a little personal. I was actually debating whether or not to even share but um, I decided I'm going to anyway because I think it could possibly help people on their cello journey. Um, but before we do that, I'm going to go ahead and have my coffee. This is my BTS boy band cold brew. And of course I need Korean snacks to go along. So this is actually my favorite Korean snack. This is um, a, a type of dok, which is like basically a Korean rice cake. And it's got this slightly sweetened red bean paste inside. It's amazing. And then I've got rice puff things and more puffed things. These bags represent just a small fraction of the mountain of Korean snacks I've consumed since I've gotten here. And my goal is to just still fit in my clothes by the time I get back and then I'm just gonna be damaged repair for a few weeks when I get home probably. All right, so before we get to the park that I wanna share with you, um, that's just a couple blocks from the apartment we're staying at. I wanted to share this coffee shop that has been like a mainstay of my visit here. It's called Tusum. I think they have actually a few locations here in Suwon. Really good coffee and they actually have a particular type of oat milk brand that I drink back in the States, so that's kind of comforting. Yeah, when I look back at this channel, it was basically just a pandemic project. And I remember being so excited when we got 200 subscribers. The pandemic was actually when I created and designed my first course, Chell in 30 Days. It was something I had in my head for a little while because as an adult learner myself at the cello, I just remember feeling that kind of friction of, you know, I'm kind of like, am I on a ch children's learning path? Like, is this the best way for me to actually be learning the cello? And I felt like I truly could help people who are starting as adults the most because I've done it as an adult. I know the pain points, I know like workarounds, you know, those kind of things. However, there is something to be said for the kind of what's really possible with a good teacher, with the right teacher in a one-on-one -on -one situation. And that's what I wanted to figure out. How can I possibly get as close as possible to that one-on-one -on -one interaction and that feeling, that kind of organic feeling of the learning process instead of, okay, I'm gonna make 30 lessons. We're gonna cover these topics. And each lesson is kind of its own little island. And then we have this little archipelago of course lessons that kind of connect because they're all about cello but they don't feel like a cohesive linear movement towards something um, and that's that took a lot of planning and designing on my part to, to figure out how I was going to swing that um, and I really think I did I was really excited about it it's actually turned into like one of the highlights of my cello career like if I had a Mount Rushmore of cello you know cello events or things I've done I would have assumed back in the day that that those four faces of Mount Rushmore, they, they would have been reserved for performance performances. And it's turned out that this course has really been an absolute highlight of my cello journey. So let me just finish up this coffee and then we'll go ahead and take that walk. All right, so we just arrived at the park that we always walk. Um, it's really beautiful. It's, it's kind of a, a big lake and then there's a walking path. And what I find interesting is that like over 90% of people all walk in the same direction. So there's kind of a really Whole communal feeling even though you know you're in a, a big-ish city and you don't really know anyone if you're me 
it still feels like everyone comes here and does the same thing together, so that's kind of fun. The life update. Um, a few things happened this year that made me start feeling like I'm not getting any younger. First was I turned 41. Uh, well, actually, the very first was that we had our baby, and then I turned 41, and I was like, okay, it's time to get back in shape. So start back at the YMCA, and I'm lifting weights, and everything's going great. And then about maybe two months into that, I'm, as I'm playing and practicing, my right arm starts to hurt at the shoulder, and um, definitely didn't feel good. I went to the doctor, they did an x-ray, and they found a bunch of calcification on the top of my humerus bone, uh, which is basically a sign of overuse. And that calcification rubs on the tendon, and that's what's causing the pain. Uh, they did an MRI also, and my rotator cuff is fine. So that's pretty much what's going on. What I found fascinating and why I wanted to share that with you was that the doctor, when she saw the calcification, she was like, okay, this was not a recent thing. This is like a lot of like years long overuse. It made me think back to the start of my phone journey. By the first five to seven years, I'd already been studying with a couple world-class teachers, but I was completely focused on playing the hardest pieces possible, playing as loud as possible, you know, everything except good ergonomics and good body use. Everything except the stuff I teach in my courses. Um, and I think basically I'm paying for it now. And that's, I just want to share this update with you kind of as a warning that, you know, it's like, you really do want to be careful um, with like pushing it and not listening to your body because it can come back to bite you. This is, you know, my shoulders had no problems at all. And then all of a sudden now, years later, it's cropping up and I'm kind of suffering the consequences of poor body use from before. Now, I should say that for my Chill on 30 Days course, I have numerous adult students, um, online students who have taken my course and are loving their Chill journey. They write me with email updates on kind of what they've been up to, and they're in their 80s. Okay, so there's, I'm not saying there's any limit, uh, age limit on when you can start cello, but what you want to do is just true, truly be very mindful with the way you're using your body and try to minimize tension and, and maximize good ergonomics as much as possible. So if you're wondering, I've asked the doctor and there's basically two, there's multiple options, but two major options. Luckily, um, it seems like with like the right kind of physical therapy, which I've signed up for when I get back, uh, I should be able to kind of circumnavigate this issue, strengthen the muscles around it and, you know, kind of get out of this without any surgery. If not, what they would do is a really interesting procedure where they stick a needle into your shoulder and they poke, they basically like chip off the calcification and then suck it up through the needle. It's called lavage. Um, so it's, it's a totally treatable, manageable situation, but I really like to get away with just physical therapy. Okay, this is something that I absolutely had to share. So you get all this, most Korean parts that people use will have a bunch of just kind of outdoor gym equipment that's bolted down and I think it's the coolest thing. People just come and it's like first come first serve. There's no sign up or you know it's just part of the park. So you know just it's a fun way to add a little physical fitness to your everyday walk. All right final call guys. Uh, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already and if you have a question for me leave it in the comment section below. Thanks so much and see you next time.